Bible. As we get started today, I uh, want to begin by reviewing over um, complex equations. Um, you didn't have any in your homework last night, but remind me, what is a complex equation, Quentin? It's an equation with a uh, real and imaginary terms. Good. An equation has some real in it and some imaginary in it. Something like, for instance, you can write this on your paper, ix plus 2y plus 11i equals 7 minus 4iy minus 3x. That would be considered a complex equation. What's the key to solving complex equations, Jamie? Um, making two separate equations well with the real one with the imaginary. Good. At your seats. Go ahead and take a moment to work that equation at your seats. Remember, once we separate the real from the imaginary, what do I need to do to the imaginary? Um, cancel the i. Knock out the i's. Sounds like what they told you not to do in biology class when you're doing the pig dot section, right? People still uh, cut this up. Sick. You were sick that yeah, day? I would say most of the dot section. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. Uh, how convenient, or inconvenient, I'm not sure which. <laughs> mm -hmm. That explains a lot. <laughs> I missed the frog, I was on a track trip. We had to leave early that day uh, for a track meet, and so I missed that one, but I think I was there for the rest of them. I wasn't nearly as grossed out as I thought I was going to be. I was, I'll be honest, I was really scared about biology class. When I went into my 10th grade year, I was like, Cutting things open and whatnot. I, just, I don't do that kind of thing. And, but I was okay. I was okay. You can't feel pain. So I think pain is my big, my big trigger. If I suspect something or someone's feeling pain, it makes me sick to my stomach. But that brain I'm holding, they don't feel no pain. Now, somebody on the side of the road, I see their brain. Oh, I'm probably losing it. <laughs> but uh, you know, just a, a sheep brain sitting there in formaldehyde. I guess I, I was more okay than I thought I'd be. All right, so do we get to this point right up front, getting off the topic of brains? <laughs> Apologies to our viewers. Um, anyway, I'll both of you. Uh, anyway, um, what do we do from here? What, there's a couple directions we could go here. What did you do, Jamie? I did the system of equations. Right, okay, so... I um, lined everything up. Okay, so you went and used the addition method, then. Yeah. You lined up the x, the y, that equals the number. So let's rewrite these both one more time now. How did you rewrite the first one? On the top one I has x, wait a minute, that, okay, I had 3x plus 2y equals 7. There we go, and then the second one? Um, x plus 4y equals 7 11. All right, and I'm gonna stay with you. Did you happen to do the addition method also? Okay, I had a feeling you probably were a substitution guy. Uh, so we're going to stay with Jamie here, and then I'll address your method real quick. Um, so now what, Jamie? I multiply 3 on the bottom equation. All right, and that gave you? 3x. Um, I'm not done this wrong. 12y? 12y, yes. And oh, negative, yeah, negative 33. 33. But that's not going to cancel 3x's, is it? Right. So now you've got to? Um, change the signs. I changed the signs on the top one. And so we should have canceled away the positive positive negative three x. We should have gotten 10y equals negative four y. And that would have given you a y is equal to negative four. And then you go back and plug that into one of these equations. Um, the bottom one. Negative four, negative four, of course. Sixteen. Sixteen, and then you subtract the eleven from the positive sixteen you got here to get x is equal to five. five. So the x is five, y is negative four. Are those the answers you got? Ooh, okay, let's figure out what happened to you then. Um, so coming back here, you did substitution. I assume that meant you ditched the 11 as a negative? 
to x is equal to negative 4y and negative 11. Then you took the negative 4y and negative 11 and right there for the x. So your top equation becomes 2y equals 7, negative 3 times negative 4y, negative 11. Or you might have distributed in your head instead of writing that out to get. I got 2 more equals Right, so it should have been a positive 12 by positive 33, of course, with a 7 here. At this point, we could have uh, add, uh, 7, 3, 3, to get 40 and move the negative, or the 12 by as a negative. So we have a 40 is equal to negative 10 y. And that's where we'll get the y equals negative 4. You plug the negative 4 in right here, 16 minus 11 still gives you the 5. But yeah, just be careful with the distribution there. Questions on complex equations. All right. Then yesterday we talked about complex graphing. And we said it looks a lot like Cartesian graphing, except there's not x and y axes class. They are real and imaginary. Real and imaginary. So your real values like 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and so forth, you know, negative 1, negative 2, negative 3. And then the imaginary axis has values like i, 2i, 3i, 4i, 5i, 6i, and so forth. Of course, negative 1i, negative 2i, negative 3i, negative 6i, and so forth, right? That's your, it's not called the Cartesian plane, it's called the, it's got real and imaginary on it, and it's still flat. Real imaginary plane? Complex oh. plane, all right, complex plane. And so if I have a number like 1, negative 4i, well, how would I graph that, Quentin? I go positive 1 on the real and negative 4i on the imaginary. And I put it here in quadrant 4. Easy enough to graph. But we use the fact that of how the graph works to say there's another way to describe the location of this point. I could say it has a certain distance or radius from the origin of the complex plane. And there's a certain angle of rotation that was used to obtain that location, right? And so instead of A plus BI, which we call the, which form? Standard. Standard form, right? I introduced to you yesterday, and you practiced this in your homework, I introduced another form of a complex number that we call the? Trigonometric form, or trig form for short, for lazy people like me. What is the trigonometric form, Jamie? Can I look at my notes? You can look back at your notes. Okay. Um, it's R times the quantity cosine theta plus theta squared minus I or yeah, I cosine the theta. All right. R times the cosine theta plus I times the sine of theta. Where you've got the theta is this angle, and the r is the distance from the, from the uh, origin to that point. Now, the key, what we were working on yesterday, was converting from the standard into the trigonometric form. We're going to work with the trigonometric form uh, more in our next lesson, but for now, just learning how to convert from the one to the other. Well, really, two keys. You've got to figure out how to find the r, and you've got to figure out how to find the theta. How do you find the r, Quentin? Careful. A squared plus B squared. Remember, it's based on Pythagorean theorem. There's my A, there's my B, leg squared plus leg squared equals hypotenuse squared. So square root of A squared plus B squared. What about the theta? How do I find the theta, Jamie? Um, it's the cosine, or, oh no, it's the tangent of B over A. The arc tangent because you're finding an angle of B over A. Now, technically, this angle is going to cause you a problem, isn't it? So rather than use this angle here, we usually just go off the reference angle right here, and then we'll account for the quadrant. So I said, for our sake, don't even try to worry about positives and negatives. Just get the reference angle say, hey, if it's in quadrant 4, knock it off at 360. Let's take this, for instance, 1 negative 4i. What would the r value have to be for this point? The square root of 17. The square root of 1 plus 16, so the square root of 17 units. And then on your calculator, take the b over the a. Again, don't worry about the negative here, just b over a and take the arc tangent. And that I can't do in my head. And we get 75.96, blah, blah, blah. But remember, that's a reference angle, isn't it? 
That's this angle. I want the quadrant four angle. So what do I have to do with my reference angle? Subtract from 360. Subtract from 360. So I make it a negative, and then I add 360. And that's another way of subtracting 360. And I get what for my actual angle? 284. You know, 284.0 degrees when we round approximately to the nearest whole, or to the nearest tenth of an angle. And usually we'll just do the one decimal place. So we can say that 1 minus 4i is roughly equivalent to the square root of 17 times the cosine of 284.0 degrees plus i times the sine of 284.0 degrees. The standard form, easy to look at. That's what makes it standard. The trig form, painful to look at, but powerful, as we're going to see in our next lessons. All right, questions on that? Let's see I did on the homework then. You, um, you did page 183, numbers 6, 8, 10, and 12. Yep. And okay, there we go. All right, good. Number six, they gave you two square to three plus two i. First thing I like to think is what quadrant is this in? I'm not actually going to take the time to graph it, but if I did, what quadrant are we in? Over positive, up positive, this is quadrant one, which means when I find my theta, it's the angle. No reference angle nonsense needed, right? So then I need to find the r. r, remember, is the square root class of a squared, plus b. a squared plus b squared. Now, the b squared is easy. The a squared is a little annoying. When you square the first part of the a, and you square the second part of the a, 3. Because when you square the square root, you get the radicate, and you multiply that together, you get a 12. So I really get the square root of 16, which is... Four. Remember, you technically would have positive negative 4, except the radius here just describes an actual distance. So since it's just a pure distance, it's just positive. We'll always assume positive on this. I don't think I mentioned that yesterday, so that explains your desire to say positive negative. We'll just say 4. Now we need the theta. So we need to take the arctangent of b over a. What numbers do I plug in, Quentin? 2 over and we realized we could cancel the twos and just say 1 over square root of 3, couldn't we? We plug that into the calculator, we take the arctangent of that, and we end up with what angle? 30. Exactly 30 degrees. And then we suddenly realize, oh, I probably could have figured that out, right? 1 over square root of 3, opposite over adjacent, opposite 1 adjacent, square root of 3, dot 30 degree angle, right? So that means that this number is equal to what, Jamie? Um, in the trig form. This is standard form. What is it in the trig oh, form? Okay. Final answer. Um, 4 times the quantity cosine of 30 plus i sine of 30. And there we go. Do we have that for our answer on number 6? All right, let's take a look at number 8. Also annoying, we had negative 2 plus the square root of negative 12. Now, wait a second. Square root of negative 12. Square root of negative? Pull out your eye. And this isn't a complex number yet. Well, at least it is, but it doesn't look like it, right? A plus B I means I need to be able to see the I. Make sense? So negative 2 plus I squared. So okay, now it looks like a complex number. I need to first of all find the R value. We're going to take the square root class of A squared plus B squared. A squared is, remember when you square a negative, you get a positive. B squared is, and once again, my R is simply... Well, square root of 16, so my r is 4. The theta here, we need to take the arc tangent of square root of 12 over 2, and it actually comes out evenly to what angle, Jamie? 60 degrees, 60 degrees this time. However, what quadrant is that in? Quadrant 2, backward 2, but then upward square root of 12. So in the second quadrant, if it says a 60 degree angle, really, what's the angle? 120. So, how do I write my answer here, Quentin? 4 times cosine 120 plus sine And there we go. Do we have this answer on that one? Or did things kind of throw us off there with the negative? 
Uh, Do we remember to pull out the eye? Yeah, pull yeah. out the eye is fit, uh, 50 degrees at one Does that make sense? So account for the quadrant when we get ready to get the angle. All right, uh, number 10. Finally, one that wasn't ugly. Though, <clears throat> looks a lot like that one, except negative 1, negative 4i. When you find your r, it's still going to be the square of 17, though. When you find your angle, it's still going to be 75.96, but in quadrant three, back one down four. So we're going to take 180, add that on, and end up with uh, 255.96, blah, blah, blah. Or approximately, if we round to just one decimal place, 256. Point zero. So our answer should have been the square root of 17 times the cosine of 256.0 degrees plus i times the sine of 256.0 degrees. Did we get that for number 10? Mm -hmm. I can't figure out how to do that. You, just, you got the 75.96 or 76.0? Okay. Does it make sense to get now? Again, we're, this was really your first chance to practice it much, so I expected there to be some mistakes. As long as it's consistently the same mistake, it's consistently easy to fix. So I'm not too worried about it. And we'll practice again here in a minute, and you'll correct all of those same mistakes. Questions on that? All right. Um, number 12. Tell you what, double check your answer to 12. There seems like there's something you may want to change about your answer. Now that we've had a chance to go through the first three. So double check your answer on 12, and then we'll take a look at it. Once you've double checked your answer, check your answer against the board. Is this what you got when you redid it? No. Still no. Okay, so Quentin, yes, you feel like you figured out some things. Jamie, what was your answer? So of course I know I didn't do the things trying to fight the quadrants, but um, I also messed up with the um, I did nine minus twenty or, or minus twenty-five. Because okay, so remember the form is a squared plus b squared, and when you square, you always get a positive. So this is three squared plus negative 5 squared, but that's going to become the 9 plus a positive 25. Make sense? Mm -hmm. All right. Um, and then on the angle, did you get the initial 59? Mm -hmm. the, um, no, I didn't. That's another. Because like, I just I tried to recalculate the um, angle using my old um, radius, and that was what messed up. Oh, but you don't use the radius to calculate the angle. Oh, my. Oh, well, okay, then I'm not sure why it is. Right, so remember, everything's based on given numbers. So we, we get the square root of 34, but we don't actually use it. We just write it down. We're going to use the 5 and the 3. And again, what I said, ignore negatives. Just call it a 5 and a 3, and then use the quadrant to tell you what to do with the reference angle. Okay. All right. Yeah. Let's do one more. Let's say we had a uh, negative 7, positive 2i. Go ahead and convert that into the standard form or into the, the trig form, rather. Jamie, I want you to talk me through what you're doing. So you just work. I'm going to mimic what you're doing for the sake of the video, but you just talk. Okay, so um, so I gain the radius, which the formula is the square root of a squared plus b squared. So it's going to be um, the negative 7 squared plus 2 squared. Well, not 2i squared, just 2 squared. Because b is the coefficient of the i. 
and I'm going to spin e49 plus 4, and I'll give us the square root of 53 as the radius. Okay. Then for the angle, we're going to say tangent of e over a, and that'll be 2 over negative 7. Well, but remember, don't worry about the negative. Yeah. Just say 2 over 7. Okay. It makes life easier. Um, arc tangent. Good, arc tangent. Yeah, good. Just give you a chance to correct it yourself. Good. 15.945. Okay. Um, since it's, um, it's in quadrant 2. Good, backward and up is quadrant 2. So we'll, um, we'll subtract what we got from 180. Okay. And get 164 degrees um, for the angle. Okay, well, I got 164.054. Okay, but if we round to the nearest tenth, that's going to put it at 164.1. One. So the balance is going to give us the root of 53 times the 20 cosine of um, 164.1 degrees plus i sine of 164.1 degrees. There we go. Is that what you had? Uh, I just have to remember to do the quadrant. Got to remember quadrants. Yep. All right. We're going to come back to some practice with this in just a moment, but I want to show you the other direction as well, because everything we did yesterday with the complex numbers was standard and trig. But answers are so much easier to look at, right, if they're in the standard form. So how do we, if we get trig, once we're working in trig, but it's ugly, right? Nobody wants to look at that. How do we go back to the standard form? So next thing you know, it's trig to standard. You could say trig in a, trigonometric form to standard form, but I, I'm so lazy, I just say trig to standard. All right, <laughs> and uh, here's the beautiful thing. It's, it's one step, just distribute. After all, if I gave you a number in the trig form, like for instance, two times the cosine of 150 degrees plus I times the sine of 150 degrees, it's a monomial times a polynomial. All I do is distribute. But I would write this down and do this with me, if you would, please. When the angles are special angles, like 150 is special, right? Its reference angle is 30 degrees in quadrant 2. So I don't need to pull the calculator off and get some weird, ugly, rounded number. I know what the cosine of 30 is. Uh, 2 over 3. Wait, no, square 3 over 2. Square 3 over 2. And I know that in quadrant 2, cosine is negative. negative. Furthermore, I know that the sine of 30 is uh, 1 over 2. And in quadrant 2, sine is quadrant. don't lose your i. Like Samson, and we're going to distribute the two into that. Does that make sense? So we just find, well, what is the cosine of 150? What is the sine of 150? Now let's distribute the two. And the nice thing is, each time you multiply the two, it's just going to knock out the denominator. What do I get? Isn't that easier to look at than that? It's just a lot easier looking. So that's all we're doing. We're just distributing. But of course, it means we're going to still use reference angles, quadrant ASTC because of the positive, negative. But that's all stuff we did a lot last semester. And we haven't done it for a little while, though, right? So this is a good review of it for us, but uh, still not you know, bad. Let's do 6 times the cosine of 60 plus i times the sine of 60. Nice thing is, these are quadrant 1 angles. By the way, Notice this was a quadrant two angle. So I got a back and up standard form, which we put it in quadrant two. Here I'm going to get forward and upward quadrant one form, right? But I don't need to worry about reference angles. I don't need to worry about ASTC. It's all going to be positive. It's all just easy. Cosine of 60. Uh, one, the sine of 60. Three, three, three. And of course, don't forget the I. And we're going to distribute the six. In both cases, the 6 is going to cancel with the 2's to leave me with a 3 that kind of gets distributed to get what? 3 plus 3i times the square root of 
Careful, it cancels with the two, right? It cancels. When you multiply here, it cancels. Then you're going to multiply here, it's going to cancel again. And there we go. A lot easier to look at, right? So we can go from the trig back to the standard pretty easily. What if I gave you uh, this? The cosine of 210 plus i times the sine of 210 degrees. Well, wait a second. It looks like we're missing something. The r value, right? The radius, if you will. Well, what does that mean the radius must be? Yeah. Well, careful, one. One. All right, the radius is zero. We got no, we're at the origin, right? Zero, zero. Um, or zero plus zero i. Uh, but it's not a zero, it's, it's a one. Um, so if we distribute a one, it's just going to be whatever. So I, I was lazy and didn't write it. Make sense? But that means we just find the cosine of 210, find the sine of 210. What's, what's the reference angle in both cases? 30. 30. And uh, what quadrant are we in? Three. Quadrant three. Okay, so cosine 30. And in quadrant three, um, sine of 30. One. And in quadrant three, okay. and don't forget the I, but where should the I go? Before, after, before. on top. Okay. Why? Because before or after ends up being pushed to the numerator in the case of a fraction, remember. And there we go, negative square root of three over two minus I over two. We're done. Questions on that one? The next one's a little more annoying because it's not a special angle. Five times the cosine of 40 plus i times the sine of 40? That's not a special angle. So what we're going to have to do here is pull out the calculator. And you're literally going to do 5 times 40 cosine, or if you drive a direct entry calculator, 4 times cosine 40. And uh, let's do a couple digits this time. Let's do hundredths. All right, so we'll say 3.83 plus 5 times 40 sine equals, or 4 times sine, 5 times sine 40. Again? Ooh, 5 times sine 40? I think I add the cosine. Okay, for me, yeah, we're not adding it on. And you'll see why in a moment. 3.21. 3.213, we're going to say 3.21, and the reason we can't combine it, I. 3.83 plus 3.21, I. But it's just distribution, whether it's working with special angles and distributing that way, or you pull out the calculator, and it still looks kind of ugly with those decimals, but whatever. Make sense? I want you to do 14 to 20 the even. 14 to 20 the even. There on page... Page hundredths if it doesn't work out evenly. If it does, just you know, roll with the radicals and fractions and stuff.
let's take a look. Number 14, was that a special angle class? No, so we just had to distribute, round off to two decimal places. Remember, you could use the fix feature on the calculator, second fix two, to a round for you if you wanted to. What did you end up with for number 14, Quentin? 2.1135134i. Hmm, really close to what I had, but not what I had, Jamie. I had 2.544 yeah, plus 5.44i. Yeah, 2.54 plus 5.44i. It's really weird. Okay, and then the other one, the uh, second half of that, six times the sine of 65. Yeah. Hmm. All right, yeah, not quite sure what you did there. Uh, let's see if you bounce back on number 16, because also not a special angle. Again, have to use the calculator. Negative 3.94 plus 0.699. There we go. Is that what you had as well? Um, not for the second part. What did you have? 0.694. I was having a lot of trouble for seriously calculating that part. The uh, 4 times the sine of 170? Sine 170 times 4. Okay. Good point. Neg you get positive 0.694. Yeah. Uh, five. So if we were if we were around 0.69, if we did just the two decimal places, hundreds. Uh, we went three digits, three sig figs, so to speak, 0.695i. You stick the i at the end. Make sense? Questions on those. All right. The next one was a special angle. What's the quadrant of a 270 degree angle, though, class? It's right here on the line. Yeah, it's a quadrantal, but it's kind of between three and four. Three and four. I usually consider it quadrant three, but it doesn't matter which quadrant you go with. Uh, because the reference angle of 270 is 90. 90. So as we look at this, we're going to take the cosine of 90. Well, what is the cosine of 90? Zero. Zero. Well, that's neither positive nor negative, so we don't need to worry about that. And um, then we take the sine of 90. One. It's 1. But no matter which quadrant you choose, it's going to be negative 1. And we're going to distribute, don't forget the i, and then we're going to distribute the 3 to that. So we get a nice, easy, little, imaginary, not even complex number. Negative 3i. Negative 3i. That worked out kind of nicely. Did we get that? Mm -hmm. I did realize it was going to be a negative 1. Okay, so you have 3i. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just remember the quadrant ASTC, quadrant 3, or quadrant 4, sine is negative. And then on number 20, what's the reference angle? In quadrant... Four, cosine of 60, Jamie. Cosine of 60 is um, 1 over 2. And in quadrant 4? It's um, positive. Positive and a half. And the sine of 60, Quentin? 3 over 2. But in quadrant 4, mm -hmm. negative square root of 3 over 2. Of course, don't forget the i. And, um, and then we have to distribute a 2 to all of that. And of course, the 2 when you distribute here cancels away to just give you 1. And the 2 when you distribute here cancels away to give you Negative square root of 3, and then don't forget the i. Technically, the i does go in front of the radical. And so 1 minus i squared of 3 is our answer for number 20. How do we do on that one? I forgot where the sign is in, right? The S-I-G-E-N right here. Yeah. Okay. All right, questions on that? Go back and do 5, oh, excuse me, yeah, 5 through 19 the odd. So the first several, again, will give you the practice of standard to trig, and then the next several will give you trig back to standard. And actually, for sake of time, what I think we'll do here is we will make that homework, and we'll take a look at those in our next lesson. All right.